It's been several days since Buckingham Palace announced the death of Prince Philip at the age of 99, and the tributes have been rolling in all weekend long, including members of the public who will continue to leave floral tributes in front of the Queen's estate and Buckingham Palace. And meanwhile, the late prince's nearest and dearest have also released statements honoring their beloved husband, father, grandfather, and of course, great-grandfather. Yeah, we heard from Prince Harry. He penned a lengthy tribute to, on his Archwell website, thanking his grandfather for his service, his dedication to Granny, and for always being himself. He said, quote, he will be remembered as the longest reigning consort to the monarch, a decorated serviceman, a prince, and a duke. But to me, like many of you have, who have lost a loved one or a grandparent over the pain of this past year, he was my grandpa, master of the barbecue, legend of banter, and a cheeky right till the end. Harry continued mm -hmm. to say, quote, while I could go on, I know that right now he would say to all of us with a beer in hand, quote, <laughs> oh, do get on with it. The former <laughs> royal ended his message with a mention of Philip's, quote, future granddaughter. Mm, it's so beautiful because we get to really see a glimpse of what life yeah. is like outside of the royalness of the royal family when it comes to Harry and his grandfather, Prince Philip. Uh, meanwhile, his brother, Prince William, also paid tribute to his grandfather in a statement on social media. He praised his granddad, writing in part, I feel lucky to have not just had his example to guide me, but his enduring presence well into my own adult life, both through good times and the hardest times. We'll also share this adorable photo from 2015 of his eldest son, Prince George, with Philip, writing, I will never take for granted the special memories my children will always have of their great-grandpa, coming to collect them in his carriage and seeing for themselves his infectious sense of adventure as well as his mischievous sense of humor. But similar to Harry's statement, we'll continue writing that he'll miss his grandfather, but knows he would want him to get on with the job as well. Of course, right. Philip does leave behind quite the legacy, which includes his wife of 73 years, Queen Elizabeth, their four children, eight grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. Uh, it would have been 11 as of this summer when Harry and Meghan, of course, welcomed their second child, a baby girl. Yeah, well, we can expect the tributes to the Duke of Edinburgh to continue to flow in. His funeral is set to take place at Windsor Castle, St. George's Chapel on Saturday, April 17th at 3 p.m. It's the same place where we watch Harry and Meghan exchange vows nearly three years ago in 2018. So here's what we know about the upcoming ceremony, which Philip had a hand in planning. For starters, it will be televised and it will start with a ceremonial procession inside the grounds of Windsor Castle, followed by several minutes of silence. We can expect to see members of the royal family walk behind his casket, much like we saw Philip do at Princess Diana's funeral in 1997. His coffin will be dressed with a wreath of flowers and there will be a military component to the ceremony, paying tribute to his time in the service. Now, when it comes to who will attend, we do know that he wanted it small. He wanted it to be an intimate affair rather than a state funeral with all kind of pomp and circumstances. So there will only be 30 people in attendance, including family and close friends. Under normal circumstances, if there wasn't a pandemic, there could be up to 800 people in attendance. So just even wrapping your head around that, we could see the difference there. Um, we now know that Prince Harry will be there. He arrived in the UK on Saturday, which I know the media, they're going to have a frenzy with that for sure. It's true. I mean, ET previously learned that Harry was doing everything he could to try and make it to the UK to attend his grandfather's funeral. So happy to hear that he's there. But meanwhile, you know, I think the other question everyone has is what about Megan? Well, she, of course, right. is pregnant with her second child. And we're told we're learning that she made every effort to make the trek as well, but didn't receive medical clearance to travel from her doctor. It sounds like she's pretty far along. But yeah. as you mentioned, all eyes will be on Harry um, now that he's back in the UK. And here's why this trip is significant. It is his first time returning home since he and Megan stepped down from royal duties last March. And it's also the first time he's seen his family since he and Megan's explosive interview with Oprah. So not only are they grieving and they're about to say goodbye and pay tribute to Prince Philip, but there's all this other tension uh, we can imagine is happening, you know? And we know Harry was very close with his grandfather, so it's no surprise that he made the trip, but it will be interesting to see how he interacts with the rest of his family, especially 
I mean, his brother, Prince William, Malicia, considering the Hi. tensions that have been high, especially since that interview. Um, here's how royal expert Katie Nichol tells us Harry might handle his rift with William. Let's take a listen. I think people are hoping that in all of this very sad story, that there may be a silver lining and that will be that William and Harry can start to talk about things and hopefully put the past behind them and move on. Certainly, I think that's what the Duke of Edinburgh would have wanted. I think as hard as it was for Prince Harry to leave his heavily pregnant wife behind, um, actually, it may not be such a bad thing that he is here on his own. Um, you know, he won't have anyone else to worry about. This is just him with his family. And hopefully there will be a time for some much needed one-on-one -on -one time with his father, with Prince William, and with the Queen. Now, if you were Harry, how would you handle things? Knowing oh. that, you know, the funeral will be televised, all eyes will probably be on him to see his interactions with his brother, and also to know everything that has played out in the last few months. Like, how do you balance that? What would you do if you were Harry? To be real, I just, I feel like there's there's a point where you have to just say, I'm not going to play the games, the same games that the world is playing. Like, mm. he just can't play into that. I would mm. just try my best to focus on why I'm there, which is to celebrate, you know, the life of his grandfather and not to be overly concerned about everything else that's going on around him. I know that is so much easier said than done, but... I would just, my main advice would be to just keep your focus. Remember why you're there and try to silence all the noise. And I think that's something that Harry has done throughout his entire life, yeah. except when it comes to his wife and his family. Outside of that, I feel like he hasn't paid attention to the things that we're talking about, the headlines that are out there. And of course, he loves and respects his grandfather. So I feel like because of that, the, he'll be able to put any differences aside so that he and his brother can stand there and honor their late grandfather. Uh, and I, all, But I also feel like if there is a riff or if there is some tension, in a way, I think this will hopefully maybe bring them closer together. And again, as Katie Nichols said, give them that much needed one-on-one -on -one time to kind of hash it right. out. But, you right. know, in addition to the conversation around Harry and William, it's also worth noting that Philip's death really marks the start of a huge transition for the royal family. I mean, let's be honest, the queen is getting up there in age two. She turns 95 on right. April 25th. Prince Charles is, of course, next to the throne, followed by Prince William. But, you know, we've all, we've already seen Prince William start to step up and assume more responsibility, especially after Harry said bye to his role as a senior royal. But quickly, I mean, what, can, what do you think we can expect for the future of the monarchy? Uh, I just hope the monarchy, you know, starts to really reflect the times. I watched an interview that Barbara Walters did with Prince Philip in 1969. And back then, people were still having the conversation of, the monarchy is old and gone. It serves no purpose anymore. They were talking about that in the interview. So I feel like over the years, we've seen that they can evolve with the times slower than most people would like, but they have. I just hope that after Meghan and Harry's claims and even hearing from young people in the UK who don't feel like the royal family reflects their values, I hope someone's able to tap into that, you know, and really get it to a point where people can feel like they're relatable to a certain extent and not this far distant old archaic institution, you know? I was gonna say, it's a centuries old institution that I fear is stuck in that time. And so I'm hoping yeah. things move forward, you know, um, as we watch them and then this transition happen, but I guess only time will tell. In the meantime, uh, as we mentioned, Prince Philip's funeral, the service is Saturday at 3 p.m. and you guys can check out etonline.com for more.